Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the E7 Defense Stay in for today's second video. Um, this is your European outlook for the next 30 days slash uh, 42 or 6 a week. So I shall get on that for you in a second. Uh, just to say that the first video release here was our 7 a.m. upload. I've got a taste of 14 day with all our break features coming up for you later on this afternoon as well. So please like, share, subscribe on all of the videos. Thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that. Uh, right then, so let's crack on European outlook for uh, the extended range, shall we? So, uh, beginning with the uh, week one, mean sea level pressure anomaly taking us through the current week, which is 29th of November to the 6th of December. We can see that we've got an area of uh, low pressure sitting across much of northern, central and eastern Europe. Uh, Europe, a big trough through there. A ridge is out in the Atlantic, extending up towards Greenland. And Iceland, and that means we're pulling in quite cold north or northeasterly winds across uh, many parts of Europe, though the far south and southeast might be dragging up like a southerly type influence into the far southeastern corner of Europe. 500 millibar high to only from the North Pole view down confirms all of this. So again, we've got mid Atlantic ridge in the Atlantic extending up towards Greenland and Iceland, trough of low pressure. Across northern, central, and western Europe, a jet stream is uh, digging through something a little bit like that, and that pulls in cold air into uh, much of northern, central, and ultimately into Europe as well. This is a cold trough of low pressure. So, uh, temperature anomaly is a week one look like that. Generally, a cold average in most parts of uh, Europe. They have got Ireland and Spain, Portugal, and the extreme west uh, looking a little bit more than average. I mean, over in the extreme east, also. It's milder than average, more definitively so there, actually right way from Greece up to um, uh, southern and southwestern parts of Russia, above average temperatures through there. In between, though, it's uh, significantly cold now, especially across Scandinavia, uh, looking really cold up there. Let's put on the temperature scale. So uh, in those dark blue shadings, like 10 degrees or more below average across some parts of uh, Scandinavia. That really is very, very cold indeed. Otherwise, we're generally across uh, Western, uh, Central, Northern Europe. We see temperatures of around uh, 1 to 6 degrees uh, below average in many areas. France looking quite cold, for example. Germany, Poland looking pretty cold uh, too. Even down to the Central Bowl of the Med, it's below average through those Central portions of Med and into Italy. Through the Adriatic towards the Balkans, cold and average through there. Although I think it's starting off quite mild at the moment, but temperatures will be falling away. As, uh, as as the week goes on. So, yeah, it's a pretty cold scene in most parts of Europe. And precipitation-wise, uh, we look like this. So, um, where it's cold over Scandinavia, it's largely dry. That's because, of course, we're blocking a of high pressure that's forcing in this cold air. Um, is is keeping things drier up there. But generally, most parts of uh, Europe are actually looking a little bit wetter than average, average with, uh, but with above average precipitation, right way from the west of Europe, Ireland, UK and France, all the way over to the west of Russia. And of course, as the temperatures are cold, a lot of this precipitation will be wintry. So early snowfalls uh, across many parts of Europe, actually, um, during uh, this week. Down into the Med, it's quite unsettled through the central bowl of the Med, especially, again, from, uh, like, Italy and down towards Greece, through the Balkans as well. So significant snowfall, particularly mountainous areas, through the Balkans, leading to the far southeastern corner of Europe, around the Black Sea. Looks pretty wet through there. Spain and Portugal uh, standing out as being reasonably dry, especially more southern, southwest. So if you want a little bit of uh, early, well, uh, sort of winter sunshine, late autumn, early winter sunshine, then uh, Spain, Portugal, especially like those uh, southern holiday resorts, probably the place to go. Right, so that's how we look for week one. Into week two, which is the 6th to the 13th of December, we look like that. So uh, high pressure is over Scandinavia, and that would be bringing like an easterly wind across the far north of Europe. At the same time, low pressure is coming in off the Atlantic up against that uh, easterly wind. Most parts of Europe look like they're uh, under low pressure, and with wind coming in off the Atlantic, probably milder, especially for western parts of Europe. Of course, this area of high pressure will bring in cold air. Perhaps even very cold air to uh, the far north and northeastern part of Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly 
for week two, if it's going to refresh, looks like that. Um, so uh, there we go, we've got high pressure again up here, particularly centered around northern Scandinavia, that's bringing easterly winds up there, potentially low pressure though, coming against that from off the Atlantic. We've got this big ridge here in the far southeast of Europe, we'll try to drag up some milder air into the southeastern corner. So the uh, temperature normally for week two, sick to the 13th of December, looks like that. Actually pretty cold across much of Northern Europe. This is a change what the ECM was showing just Friday when it was trying to flip things back milder across particularly western areas. Now it's looking cold still across much of Northern Europe. Again, particularly so for Scandinavia, but this cold is uh, continuing across uh, western parts of Europe as well. So Ireland, UK, much of the low countries, Germany, uh, having cold average temperatures. France is near normal, um, but maybe still a little bit, little bit on the cold side through eastern parts of France. The central part of the Mediterranean also looks uh, generally cold. Much of eastern Europe looks cold. So that's quite a cold scene uh, across much of Europe, actually. Uh, for uh, week two. And as I say, that is a change to what the ECM was forecasting just on Friday when it wanted to turn things a lot milder, you know, by the middle part of December. Uh, so that just tells us that the model probably isn't performing all that well at the moment. Uh, the Far East, which is unusual for the ECM, ECM because it is, is a good model. Um, the Far East and South East of Europe and South West of Russia coming out mild and average. That's where the warmth is as uh, with that ridge pulls up the air from the south. Most of the Med looks quite chilly, even like um, Spain, some Spain and Portugal generally a little bit below actually the coldest weather is clearly across the north of europe and the northeast too latvia estonia could be really cold there severely cold um into finland perhaps as well uh and, and covering scandinavia with temperatures again at temperature numbers again around 10 degrees uh, below average with a lot of snow with that of course uh precipitation wise it looks like that so um yes it's driving average up here but of course anything that's falling will be snow uh around the baltic uh, baltic sea for example um so so driving average in far north europe under that scandinavian high otherwise a bit wet and average especially so through western parts of europe ireland uk down to france into north parts of spain portugal um maybe the low countries western germany could be quite unsettled there. And, of course, as this low pressure is coming up against that Scandinavian high, therefore, and it is quite cold, again, some of that precipitation will be perhaps wintry. Where is wintry potential uh, with that in, in parts of Europe? Over on the eastern side of Europe, around average to slightly above average precipitation there. Again, we have to think about snowfall, except in this sort of area where it will be that little bit uh, milder. Right, week three is going to be the 13th to the 20th of December. Now we're going into a milder pattern. So we find Scandinavian high goes. That's uh, collapsing southwards, I think, into eastern parts of Europe. Low pressure is coming in around Greenland and Iceland. So that will revert wind back to the west into the western and northwest of Europe, that will bring the air in from off the Atlantic. Meanwhile, eastern Europe probably turns very cold under this area of high pressure. The 500 millibar height anomaly again shows a return of westerlies for northern and western uh, Europe. High pressure sort of collapsing into these eastern parts of Europe. Low pressure around Greenland, Iceland, up here, and the jet stream and wind flow coming from the west and from the southwest. It should this should show a significant increase in temperature across northwest Europe. Let's have a look. There we go. So all of those cold average temperatures suddenly disappear, or most of them anyway, and it goes milder than average, or average to mild average across Northern Europe. A big flip, Scandinavia, actually, really, really big flip in week three compared to uh, weeks one and two. Northern Britain also uh, goes a little bit milder than average, still a bit on the cold side down in the southwestern corner. Otherwise, most other areas have no signal or are around average in most white shadings in the far east of Europe into the west of Russia. Sure, again, looking uh, reasonably mild and average through there. And as far as precipitation goes for week three, most areas are driving average under that area of high pressure, sort of collapsing southwards and allowing these westerly winds to come back in. It does go wetter than average to the north of the UK and Ireland. Uh, uh, so through the north where you see heading towards Scandinavia, above average precipitation there. Otherwise, it's kind of like average to uh, drier than average really from the west to the eastern side of Europe. 
Week four will be the 20th to the 27th of December. Big area of high pressure takes over across much of Europe then. So, uh, again, big changes week to week. A lot of um, sort of intra-week variation going on here. So now we lose all of that low pressure. We get high pressure back across the west of uh, Europe. Sort of going towards the southern part of Scandinavia, so that could start to bring some colder air from the east into some of these eastern and, and central parts of Europe, perhaps. However, high pressure has got to go further north to pull in uh, a proper uh, sort of uh, easterly type flow. The 500 millibar height anomaly, and this is covering Christmas week, of course, again shows that big area of high pressure there across much of northern West Europe. The cold area that is probably going to be in the east of the south so that could deliver some very cold weather down towards the Balkans, for example, and around the Black Sea um, with, with northeast winds there. Otherwise, most parts of northern, central, western Europe actually under the area of high pressure, which, of course, could produce frost and fog, but won't won't sort of pull in those um, uh, winds from uh, from the Urals and whatnot. So the temperature anomaly looks like that, but just southern Europe going a little bit cooler than average, so like we've got... Um, Western and southern France, around the Bay of Biscay, towards Spain and Portugal, into the Med, around Italy, again through the Balkans, as I said, uh, towards the Black Sea, down towards Greece and Turkey. Those areas look quite cold on the southern and eastern side of that area of high pressure. To the northwest, it is still quite mild. That's covering much of Scandinavia, especially northern Scandinavia, you're going to be cold there. Remember, these are anomalies to average. So even if the temperature anomaly is like three degrees above average across um, across um, Arctic Scandinavia, it will still be very cold even at three degrees above average. Um, into Ireland and the UK, so it's a little bit uh, more than average in northern areas. And then the central parts and, and sort of eastern parts of Europe, there we see no particular signal. Probably because under the high pressure, uh, there would be frost fog going on, even while the upper air temperatures may be reasonably mild. Precipitation looks like that, very dry across northern and western Europe under that large area of high pressure. It's a little bit more unsettled across southern parts of Europe. Right, so that's the 30-day outlook uh, done. Let's just have a look at weeks 5 and 6 before we go. So week 5 will be the 27th of December to the 3rd of January. No real changes in this week. Lots of high pressure continuing, particularly across western parts of uh, Europe. Um, 500 millibar high anomaly towards the new year, looking like that. Again, very, very strong anti-cyclonic signals here with high pressure well and truly in control across northwest Europe. Looks more unsettled across southern Europe, I have to say. Uh, and then uh, temperature anomalies, therefore, look like that. So it does turn really cold under that area of high pressure to the south of it. Uh, so, so, yeah, you know, you've got a strong cold signal here for much of western Europe and southern Europe into eastern Europe as well. Just this extreme northwestern corner. Again, unfortunately, those of us in the UK does include uh, northern parts of the UK, certainly Scotland anyway, and Scandinavia, uh, still with that influence from off the Atlantic with those west to southwest winds. But actually, to the south and the east of that area of high pressure, it does look quite cold with winds probably in from the northeast. Um, Substantial wise, again, you know, strong dry signals across most parts of Europe under that big area of high pressure. That high pressure just goes a little bit further north to be centred over Scandinavia rather than Germany. Then, uh, then many parts of Europe will be plunged into the freezer around Christmas and New Year. And as this is like four, five, six weeks away, there is going to be some uncertainty about where that high pressure is, you know. Um, and it is quite a significant change, this update, on what the model is showing just on Friday. So again, I'm not sure the ECM is performing all that well. Finally, we go through to week six, which will be the 3rd to the 10th of January. High pressure then moves over towards the eastern part of Europe. Low pressure up here, probably again a return of an Atlantic type uh, flow. 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. If the model's going to refresh, there we go. Um, that still shows quite a bit of high pressure, actually, above average heights, really, from, like, France and the UK, over towards Eastern Europe. Still low pressure up here. Not much sign of northern blocking. So not around Greenland, anyway. So if, if it is going to get cold, I think it'll be from, like, a Scandinavian high rather than sort of uh, Greenland-type high. Because uh, it does look like there's going to be quite a bit of low pressure around Greenland, actually. Temperature anomalies look like that. So southern Europe uh, looking quite cold in the south and southeast. Milder again in the north and in the northwest. And finally, precipitation 
looks like that. Getting a little bit more unsettled uh, across northern and western Europe, perhaps uh, drier over on the eastern side of Europe. Quite an interesting update, this, and it is significantly different, I think, these patterns. I have to review, but I think this is quite significantly different to what we saw just on Friday. Um, so, in a few days, the model has, you know, changed quite a bit, I think, as early as, like, week two, week three. So, uh, I'm not sure the model is performing all that well in the placement of these areas of high pressure, which does add an extra degree of uncertainty. We're certainly starting off cold across many parts of Europe. It looks like that goes on into next week as well. Watch out what's happening with that Scandinavian high. And then beyond that, further on into December, I don't think Mars has got a handle on this uh, at this stage, where the high pressures are going to be sitting you know, in relation to the low pressures. So uh, watch your space. It's going to be a very interesting run up towards Christmas, I think, uh, if this is anything to go by. Right, uh, that's that one done then. Uh, we should be back later on with your 10 to 14 day that will include all of the regular features as well. So come back for that then for this week's EC 30 days slash six weeks look ahead. That's all for now and thanks for watching.